there's this argument that has been raging forever in fitness. What does it actually mean to be strong? Is it about lifting some insane amount of weight off the floor? Or is it about having complete, gravity-defying control over your own body? It's basically split people into two camps. You've got the weightlifters, the iron tribe, who measure strength in plates and pounds. And then you have the calisthenics crew, the masters of body weight, turning playgrounds into their own personal labs. Now the easy answer is just do both. But easy answers aren't the point. We're here to get to the truth. We're going to look at the one thing that actually builds all strength. This idea called progressive overload and use it to figure out which method is king for raw power. So, what's it going to be? Calisthenics or weights? Let's get into it. Defining the contenders. All right. Before we pick a winner, you got to know the contenders. And these aren't just ways to work out. They're whole philosophies on how to get strong. First up, calisthenics. Cool name, right? It's from old Greek words for beauty and strength. It's the art of using nothing but your own body for resistance. Think push-ups, pull-ups, squats, and then all the wild stuff you see gymnasts and street workout pros do, like the planche or the human flag. Calisthenics is all about mastering your body. It's about building strength that's tied directly to your own frame, getting better at moving yourself through space with grace and power. Strength is movement. Then you've got weightlifting. This is the science of adding outside weight to force your muscles to work. We're talking barbells, dumbbells, all that stuff. It's a super direct, measurable, and pretty much endlessly scalable way to build strength. When you see a power lifter squatting a small car or an Olympian clean and jerking a crazy weight overhead, that's the peak of this world. Weightlifting is about creating as much force as possible. Progress is simple. Add another plate to the bar. The goal here isn't just to move, it's to move something that feels immovable. So both paths get you crazy strong, but they take completely different routes. The real question is, which one gets you to the absolute peak of raw power? The case for calisthenics, the art of relative strength. So let's start with the case for calisthenics. This style is famous for building what's called relative strength. Simply put, that's how strong you are for your size. Your strength to weight ratio. And you could argue this is the most useful kind of strength for, you know, life. Every time you climb stairs, get off the floor, or hop a fence, that's your relative strength at work. And this is where calisthenics just wins. A pull-up isn't just a back and biceps thing. It's your lats, your core, your grip, everything firing together to haul your body up against gravity. This creates this incredible connection between your brain and your muscles, and it gives you a rock-solid core because your midsection is always working to keep you stable. The best part about calisthenics is how accessible it is. You don't need a pricey gym membership. The world is your gym, a floor, a park bench, a tree branch, that's all you need to start getting strong. But wait, how do you get stronger if you can't just add more weight? That's the magic of progressive overload in calisthenics. Instead of adding plates, you mess with leverage. You change the angle. You make things less stable. You don't just do more push-ups. You go from regular to diamond push-ups to hit your triceps and chest harder. Then maybe you work on archer push-ups putting more weight on one arm. The goal? Maybe the one-arm push-up, a serious feat of strength. Getting there is a skill itself. It doesn't just build muscle. It teaches you how your own body works. The case for weightlifting. The science of absolute strength. Okay, now for the house that iron built. If calisthenics is the master of relative strength, weightlifting is the undisputed king of absolute strength. Absolute strength is just the max amount of force you can produce. Full stop. It's not about being strong for your size. It's just about being strong. This is how we measure the world's strongest people. 
The biggest edge for weightlifting is how simple and exact its progressive overload is. Want to get stronger? Add more weight, that's it. It's a clear, straight line. If you bench 135 for 5 reps, you know that next week, the goal is 140. That simple feedback is super motivating and it's a bulletproof way to make sure you're always forcing your muscles to get bigger and stronger. Your body has no choice but to respond. On top of that, weightlifting lets you isolate muscles like nothing else. Calisthenics is mostly big, compound movements, but weights give you the tools to target specific muscles with laser focus. Want bigger shoulders? The overhead press is right there. Need stronger hamstrings? Hello, Romanian deadlifts. Being able to hit and overload one muscle at a time is a huge advantage for building balanced, pure strength and size everywhere. And we have to talk about legs. This is probably the biggest knock on doing only calisthenics. Look, pistol squats are amazing feats of balance and single leg strength, but they just can't touch the pure power you can build with a heavy barbell squat or a deadlift. With a barbell, you can load your legs with hundreds and hundreds of pounds, way more than your body weight can offer. That's how you build an unmatched level of lower body power. The Scientific Showdown progressive overload is king. So we've got these two powerful methods, but the thing that sits at the center of this whole debate, the engine that builds all strength, is progressive overload. Your muscles don't know if they're lifting a dumbbell or your body. They just know tension. To get stronger, you have to hit them with more tension than they're used to. So the real question is, which method is better at doing that for building pure, raw strength? Let's imagine two athletes. Both want to build the strongest upper body they can. Athlete A goes the calisthenics route. They master push-ups, then they make it harder. Feet up on a bench, explosive push-ups, archer push-ups. Each step up is a big jump. It takes more than just strength. It takes skill, balance, new muscle control. And that leap from an archer push-up to a one-arm push-up? That can take months, even years. The progress isn't a straight line. It's like a series of huge walls to climb over. Now, athlete B takes the weightlifting path. They're on the bench press. They start at 135 pounds. Next week, 140. The week after, 145. The movement itself never changes. The only thing that changes is the weight. This lets them make tiny, consistent, measurable gains in strength. While athlete A is battling physics and leverage, athlete B is on a straight, clear path to getting stronger. And that's the whole argument in a nutshell. For building the most strength possible, being able to add just a little more weight week after week is a total game changer. Calisthenics progression can hit a ceiling. Once you master a really hard skill, it's tough to make it just a tiny bit harder, unless you start adding weight. And at that point, you're not doing pure calisthenics anymore. All right, if you're getting something out of this and it's making you rethink how you train, do me a solid and smash that subscribe button. We are all about bringing you more clear, evidence-based fitness stuff like this. And when you subscribe, it makes all of this possible. The ultimate method, forging the hybrid athlete. So where does that leave us? What's the final verdict? Who wins? If the question is strictly about which method is better for building the highest possible level of raw, absolute strength, the answer has to be weightlifting. The ability to fine-tune the load and scale it up forever gives it the edge for maximizing force. But the real answer, the one that's actually going to help you the most, is a little more interesting than that. The ultimate method isn't about picking a side. It's about ending this versus argument and creating something new, the hybrid athlete. Stop thinking of them as rivals and start seeing them as two perfect halves of the same coin. They cover each other's weaknesses. They make each other stronger. When you combine them, 
You build a body that's not just brutally strong, but also athletic and capable. Here's how it works. Use the big, heavy lifts, squats, deadlifts, overhead presses to build your foundation of absolute strength. They are the best tools for packing on muscle and raw power. At the same time, practice your calisthenic skills, pull-ups, dips, handstands. These moves will build your relative strength, give you insane body control, and build a core made of steel. The power you build from a 400-pound deadlift will make you feel weightless when you try a human flag. The body awareness you get from a handstand will make your heavy overhead press safer and stronger. So if you want to become a hybrid athlete, here's what you do. Build your foundation with the big lifts. Squats, deadlifts, bench press, and overhead press should be your bread and butter. Get really, really good at the basic calisthenics movements. Pull-ups, dips, push-ups, L-sits. These are non-negotiable for real-world upper body strength. Use weighted calisthenics to bridge the gap. Once you can crank out 15 clean pull-ups, don't just go for 20. Strap on a weight belt with 10 pounds. This is the magic formula. The perfect movement patterns of calisthenics plus the scalable overload from weights. Honestly, weighted dips and pull-ups might be the two best upper body builders, period. This hybrid approach lets you smash through plateaus in both, creating a cycle where you're always getting better. Conclusion So, this big debate, calisthenics versus weightlifting, it doesn't end with a knockout punch for one side. It ends with bringing them together. While weightlifting wins the title for building pure, maximal strength, a smart athlete knows that's only part of the picture. True strength isn't just about the numbers on the bar. It's about being capable, period. It's having the absolute strength to pick something heavy up off the floor and having the relative strength to pull your own body over a wall. It's power fused with control. So stop thinking versus start thinking and use the iron to build your raw power and use calisthenics to master your body. Do both, and you're not just a weightlifter or a calisthenics guy. You're a complete athlete. You're truly strong. Now I want to hear from you. What's your style? Are you team calisthenics, team weightlifting, or are you a hybrid building the best of both? Drop a comment below and tell me why. Let's talk about it. And if you haven't yet, subscribe, hit the bell, so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching. Now go train smart.